It's a well-known fact that manufacturers often use cheap thermal paste on their notebooks and their laptops in the assembly line. Take for example my MSI GL62M you can see in the background on the right of the screen. Now I repasted this one and it lowered the maximum temperatures an amazing 15 degrees Celsius which is huge. I did have problems with that laptop. It was overheating. It was causing thermal throttling, was causing stuttering in games and performance problems. I thought it was a cooling problem and all it was was just down to cheap crappy paste that MSI used. Now I have my Mi Notebook Pro here. Maximum temperatures after doing a stress test on the CPU are 74 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to repaste this one, show you how to do it, show you how to open it up. And we'll check and see if we can lower those maximum temperatures. So hopefully the fans will come on a little less and we can push the power limit just a little bit higher too. So you will need a Torx screwdriver, the T5 bit is the size of it that it uses. So we have all these Torx screws around the outside you need to remove. And there is one hidden under this foot here in the middle, so don't forget that one. Now unclipping the base is a little tricky. I recommend starting right next to the hinge here in the corner. Just pull up this area. You may need a guitar pick or a plastic pry tool and then just work your way around the sides unclipping it. It's quite difficult at first and it feels like you're even going to break something but don't worry you should hear a click and that means those clips are then being undone. So we need to play it safe here. Unplug the battery. It simply just pulls up this clip here then it connects it so it's completely disconnected and just leave it up like that. You'll be fine. You don't need to remove it completely. Now with a standard Phillips sized one, this is the double zero size, so very small, unscrew all of those screws here that are holding this heatsink on and the copper heat transfer pipe. Now to get this off, you don't have to remove the fans at all. You can leave those in. We need to pry up from the front here and just pull up on that. So it takes a little bit of effort to get this off because it's actually clipped in the shielding that's on here and then simply pull it up. Now I can feel that these cooling fins there either side, they, they think they're taped in. There we go. Now they actually have come out. There is just a little bit of double sided tape I can see here that has been holding that in place. So a close up of the RAM here you can see we have two one gigabyte chips there for the GPU. This right here is the MX150. Then we have our CPU, which is the 8th generation i7 8550U. And each of these Samsung chips here are 2 gigabytes of RAM. That's that double data rate for memory. Now you can see the thermal paste job they have done isn't actually too bad. Just focus on that. They didn't go overboard, especially on the GPU. Doesn't seem to have a lot there. And we have a look at the back of the copper heatsink. You can see there that, yeah, there's a little bit of excess there, but overall not too bad. So I'm not really too sure if I can improve on this, but I'll try anyway and I'll repaste it. Now clean up the stock thermal paste, which by the way looks quite cheap to me because it's already starting to dry out, or at least so signs of that. Use something like Arctix Clean is what I'm going to use here. So you want the CPU die to be nice and clean. Uh, don't worry too much about what's left over on the sides there, just the surface of the die. You can see I've cleaned up these two here and I have also cleaned up the GPU. There's a little bit of residue left, but there are some tiny little resistors there on the GPU that I don't want to risk damaging because they are so small and probably be very easy if you were wiping that with um, a Tipex or a cotton bug or whatever you want to call it, uh, that you could probably end up damaging them. So now all our surfaces are nice and shiny and clean, we can proceed to put on some new thermal paste. I use a high quality one I think on this chipset because what I do on the Apollo Lake, so I just use anything, but what I've got on hand is MX4. I mean, this isn't super high quality or anything like that. You can probably go out there and buy one of those. I think it's Grizzly has the best thermal compound if you want and put some of that on there. Now I would not use a metal compound, those ones that are metal because that's conductive and if you put it on, for example, here on the GPU, that could probably end up overspilling and shorting out any of those resistors there and completely frying the GPU. So you don't want that. Now there's no resistors around this, so we don't have any risks there of any overspill, at least on the CPU here, but still I wouldn't risk it. Now you use your own method to apply thermal paste there. Now I'm gonna do what's called the bag method or the baggy method. It's just put a little bit on the die and then I'm gonna spread it around with a plastic bag because I found that I've had the best results doing this, at least on my MSI. So just put a little bit on there and any excess I will get rid of anyway, but not that I'm too worried about that. So, tiny bit here too. Don't want to overdo it. 
and then use a plastic bag to spread this out real thin. Now some people say that this method is not good, but because I got the good results on the MSI, I'm gonna go with the same method I use. So you spread this out now to a nice thin, easy, nice, same level, consistent. So now I have a nice even level of thermal paste over the GPU, the die. Yes, there's a little bit of overspill. Yes, it's not perfect, but hey, you do it perfect on your own one. And since you have it open, now's a good time to add your SSD you want. If you want to add an extra one and use up that spare bay we have, then of course you go ahead and put one in. SATA 3 or even NVMe drives work in there. So both spec works, but it must be 22 by 80, the size of it. So before we put the lid on and screw it all back in place, remember to clip the battery back in. Now because it has been unplugged, any BIOS settings will be undone there. I don't think they're gonna be saved, so it might take a little bit longer to power on. So it's clipped back in. Just another tip too, that when you put the case back on, make sure you start with the front first. So you hold that in place there, and then push in the sides, and you'll find it'll be easier to clip in. Okay, so the five minutes of the Intel stress test is just about to finish up now. And you can see that maximum temperature is 69 degrees. So really, it's not worth it, is it? Not for five degrees. That's all we're going from. We're going from 74 maximums before stock. And now with my mod, the repaste, it's only dropped five degrees. So really, it's not worth that effort there. So I do hope to see you back in the channel with perhaps maybe more copper heatsink mods. But uh, for these kind of results, I'm not too sure I would make this kind of effort, at least not on the Core i5s or the i7s. I know on the Apollo Lake, the passively cooled ones, it makes a huge difference. But in this case, not enough of a difference really, I feel. So, hope to see you then. Bye for now.